let's acknowledge our sins and so prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, living word, you are the source of all that is good. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, giver of life, you lead us to everlasting life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, just judge, you will come in glory on the last day. Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant it with you as our ruler and guide. We may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast, even now, to those that ever endure. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God asked, Ask something of me, and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord my God, you have made me, your servant, king to succeed my father David. 
but I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased with Solomon when he made this request. So God said to him, Because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, nor for understanding so that you may know what is right, I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now, and after you there will come no one equal to you. The word of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. Thanks to God. God.
Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again. And out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we hear about the account of King Solomon. Solomon was the son of King David, and when he came to the throne, he was a young man. And you heard the opportunity that God gave him, because he said, okay, you're going to be the ruler of these people. What do you want me to give you to assist you in the process of ruling over Israel? Do you want wealth, power, political influence, a long life? And Solomon said, no, you know what I really want? I'm a young man. A lot of things I don't know. I'm inexperienced. So what I want more than anything is wisdom. So look what he turned out. This is an honest-to-God gold plate. I mean, it is really and truly not painted. It's made of 24 karat gold, or at least it's plated with 24 karat gold. And Solomon said, yeah, you know, this is great, but on the other hand, that's not what I need. What I need is wisdom to guide my people. And remember the fantastic story involving King Solomon, in case you forgot. Two women came in during one day when he was judging. Do you remember the story now? No, okay, well here goes. <laughs> two, two, two ladies walked in and they just recently had children. And they were sleeping in the same bedroom and I guess they didn't have Walmarts back then. So they didn't have individual cribs and the babies were sleeping in the same bed. When they woke up, one of the babies was dead. And so they both laid claim to the baby. One woman lied because she knew that the dead child was hers. But she was going to try to abscond with the other one. So they went before the king and they both made their pitch and said, hey, this is my kid. I want the child. And after Solomon had listened to all the squabbling, he said, okay, you know, we've got to settle this, so guard, come over here. Break out your sword. Is that the baby? Yeah, bring it up and we'll cut it in two. Each of you can take home a half. And the real mom said, oh no, let her have it. I, I want the baby to survive. That's, that's okay by me. And so Solomon immediately knew the identity of the real mom. So he said to the other one, you know, you're gonna we'll deal with you later, but we know because this woman's good heart, she's the mom. And that's the kind of salt wisdom Solomon exhibited. Too bad because his sons didn't learn, his sons were Jeroboam and Roboam, and they destroyed the country of Israel, and the nation disappeared under their rule. So it didn't last very long. And the reason that it's important tonight to talk about the wisdom of Solomon is because it's something we need. Think of all the decisions we're having to make right now. Simple ones. You're here tonight for a service. Should I go to Mass? Am I going to risk being there among that group of people? Is everything going to be sanitized? Is Father Jim going to sneeze on me? Things like that, right? I mean, I'm not kidding. You really do have to think about that. And you'll see how many times I told Father Tran before he went on vacation that I was going to install a shower head 
so we'd have sanitizer and we could just la, 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 you know, go to town cleaning up so you guys wouldn't feel threatened. We really do make that decision. How many of you are talking to your children? I'll get away from this mic a bit so that I'm not. As a matter of fact, I'll turn the other one off. Are you able to hear me? Okay, I just want to make sure, but I don't want those plosives to keep exploding. Okay, another thing is, you probably talk to your children about sending their children to school. Think of that decision and the impact that it's having. Think of the decision that teachers are having to make. Am I going to go to a classroom? We think about celebrations. Am I going to go to that anniversary party? Should I go to that restaurant? Do they have enough distancing? Every day during this era, we're having to make decisions that we've never confronted in our lives. And it's an everyday thing that we deal with. And there are folks who get hurt too. Last night at the baseball game, one gentleman from the Giants made the choice not to kneel before the anthem and said, the only person I kneel to is God. And so today, you can imagine what he's dealing with. Again, choices. And that's my only point this afternoon. I'm not standing here trying to make a political point. What I am saying though is that we have to pray to God for the kind of wisdom he gave Solomon. Because we're living now in a time frame when we need it more than any other time frame that's existed in recent history. We have to make very important decisions because our lives depend upon it. So today, let's pray for one another. Let's pray that we stand up for what is right, make the decisions with the help of the Holy Spirit, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, and then make those decisions with courage because the only one we really do have to make an account to is, or let me try again, the only one we have to explain our actions to is God. So may we do what's right so we can step up and say, well, I didn't want the gold. What I wanted is a relationship with you, doing what's right, living with you for eternity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's do the regular creed that we do at the beginning of the rosary. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Renewing our trust in the Father's love, we turn to him now with our needs. We pray that the church may stand as a living witness to truth, freedom, and, and to peace and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray that God will bless and strengthen all families in faith, hope, and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for those who risk their lives in order to protect the lives of others, that they may be strengthened, shielded, and aided. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And we pray for the grace this week to live with deeper dedication to the treasure of our Catholic faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And we pray for all those who are ill, especially for Ken Latimer, Cindy Bradshaw, Juan Jose Castillo, Sue Angelo, Lucy Zamparia, Solomon Osamu, Connie Samora, 
Darren Valdez, Sonny Fish, John and S Selena Emerson, Eric Reyes, Larry, Larry Horton, Lorraine Chavez, Sandra Valente, John McGuire, Valerie Garalde, Ryan Ruppel, Nicole Dill, Bob Goodnell, Margaret Spain, Pinky Ann Snorty, Benjamin Bontrager, Adeline Frame, Rose Pomroy, Jan Douglas, and Manuel Martinez. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we pray for all those who have died, especially for Donna Plock, Patrick and Joanna Bronicle, Dolores Lessing, and Lawrence Klaus, and Rebecca, Rebecca Ugalde. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we pray for the intention of this Mass, for the repose of the souls of Lance Corporal Andrew Rydell and David Christian. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, And we pray those prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, when we call, you answer us. Help us now in our need, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands to the praise and the glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And, lift them up to the Lord. and let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just, our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness it's ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from an ending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us eternal life. So we join the angels and saints as we now acclaim.
are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. A similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis our Pope, Samuel and Jorge our bishops, and all the clergy. Remember Andrew and David, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who are united with your son in a death like his may now share in his resurrection. Have mercy on us, we pray, that the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, that we too may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, a glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the words, and my soul shall be healed. Consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son, grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we have a couple of announcements here. We invite you to our confession time Saturday mornings from 9 to 10 a.m. and Tuesday through Friday at 11.30 a.m. on the weekdays. Beginning August 8th, confession time on Saturdays will change to 2.30 p.m. instead of 9 a.m. in the morning. August 15th is the Feast of the Assumption. Mass will be Saturday, August 15th at 9 a.m. The Feast is not a Holy Day of Obligation this year. We will still be distributing Holy Eucharist after all Masses each day in the parking lot. And as always, we appreciate your donations and support for our parish. And we thank you for continuing to support us during this trying time. Terry is going to try out her new kayak after Mass, so you might want to watch for that and get your cars out of the way quickly because uh, she's not too well, uh, yeah, well, I don't know. Talk about her abilities. <laughs> the Lord be with all of you. And, with your spirit. and may God bless and keep all of us. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thank Thanks you, to God. Have a good week, everyone. Thank, Thank you, Father. <laughs>